Okay, so you're shooting mono, luminance, red, green, and blue channels over multiple nights. How do you stack them all together in one final image? Obviously, you can do it manually within Cyril, but that gets very time consuming, especially when you have multiple nights. So what I wanted to show you guys is there's a way to take data from all four of those channels, stack them all at the same time using one script that's created by Cyril. Now, I haven't made the jump to mono yet. Once again, borrowing data from my friend Doug over at Astro AF to be able to bring this video to you guys. So what I'm going to do is show you how you can stack all this data together in one and fell swoop using Cyrillic. And I've done a video on Cyrillic before. I'll leave a link in the description as well as up in the corner to that video because I'm not going to go over how to set it up, how to download it. If you're not familiar with it, go back and watch that video first. This is kind of like an intermediate use for it now. So using Cyrillic, we're going to use it to create a, a single script for us that is going to stack our luminance, our red, our green, and our blue stacks. Then it'll also create our final LRGB composite for us automatically. So this is a time saver, especially like I said, if you're shooting mono multiple filters over multiple nights. So let's take a look at it. My name is Rich and you're watching Deep Space Astro. Okay, so there's a couple different ways that you can do this as far as creating your project with multiple sessions within Cyrillic. First one is to come up into File and then New, and this is M16, so I'll put M16 in the object name. Session base name is just the prefix for the session names. I'm good with S, so you can change that to whatever you like. And then we can specify the number of sessions. Now, even though this data was collected over 14 days, Doug didn't shoot luminance, red, green, and blue every night of those 14 nights. They were spread across those 14 nights. Even if I did require 14 sessions, doing it from the new project box here, you can only go up to a maximum of 10. It won't let you go any more than that. But you can add additional once the project is created if you need it. So I'm I'm gonna set it for 10. We don't need that many for each of the filters, but I'll show you as we go through it how to keep things organized and cleaned up. The next thing we need to do is, again, because we're working with luminance, red, green, and blue, light will be our luminance under the mono section here for the layers. And then I'm gonna tick red, green, and blue, and then okay. And you can see here I have, here's my object name, M16. I have 10 layers for luminance. I have 10 for red, 10 for green, and 10 for blue. This view down here is just showing you your working directory and the folder structure that it's going to complete as it goes through this whole process. Like I was saying, the other way that you could do that, if you didn't want to specify all of your sessions, that 10 that I maxed out, you can do them one at a time as you need them. So for example, I have 10 sessions for luminance. If I needed an 11th session, I can come up to project and say, add light, specify light for luminance, and then my session name, if I take change that S10 to S11 and then click OK, you'll see now we have our 11th session for luminance. That's how you get past that 10 session maximum when you're setting up your project. So that also means you don't need, you could just specify one and you can create your sessions as you need them as you go through the process. Either way works. So I am going to remove the one I just created. So we have 10 of each. And our next step is, is just dumping all the files for our luminance, red, green, and blue, and keeping them separate over those multiple nights. So if I click on session one for my luminance, and then come over and hit files, you can see where it says image, that's where we put our luminance, biases, biases, darks, darks, flats, flats, or if you're using dark flats instead of biases, then you would put your dark flats down here. Now, because Doug shoots with a cold astronomy camera, he only has one set of darks and one set of biases because darks and biases with a cold camera can be reused over multiple sessions, right? So that's what he's given me. So we're gonna do something here that's gonna speed up this process a little bit before we start dumping all of our data into these session layers. So to show you what we're working with, this is the data that Doug has provided for me. You can see I have my biases here and my darks here. So what I've done is I've taken the biases and the darks and I've created master files of them. And I did that using a script that I wrote for Cyril. I'll just show you the script here. It's part of my Mars suite called Create Master Bias and Create Master Dark. I have a video on setting all this up and how to download these scripts. If you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description as well up in the corner here. But that's what I did was I've used my bias script and my dark script to create my master. So after running that script, just to show you, I ended up with a master dark based on the frames that Doug gave me, as well as a master bias based on the frames that Doug gave me. What that allows me to do now, if I come back over into Cyrillic and under project and set biases and dark masters for all of the project, 
I can set those masters. So the biases, we're going to go over to where I store my biases, which is in my masters folder there, and then do the same thing with the darks. And then click OK. Now, for each of my sessions, if we come over into the files, you can see my masters are set. So for all 40 of these session layers that I created, I've just populated my bias and my darks because I'm using a, a master for each of them. So now we don't have to worry about adding the biases and darks to each of our sessions. All right, so now the challenge is going through and adding just the luminance for one particular night to each of my session. And the same thing with the red, the green, and the blue. That can be tiresome, but depending on how your naming conventions or your files came out of your acquisition software, it's, it's relatively easy. So again, let's take a look at what Doug sent me and we'll go into his M16 directory here. So these are my 14 nights. If I open up the first one, you can see it's a mix of luminance, red, green, blue, and then also the flats for those channels as well. Everything's preceded with flat. If it's a flat, if it's just an image through one of his four filters, it just starts with the date. So if we just slide this over to the side so we can see both views of what we're working with. And again, starting with my luminance for session one, instead of manually selecting all my luminance frames that I have in here, of which there are only five right now, and dragging them over or using the add button, there's an easier way. And that's using this button up here it says load files with patterns so we can actually do wild carding with this stuff so you can see i've already had it set for a trial run that i was doing the first thing i'm going to do is specify my directory so over here we're sitting in the july 12th directory for m16 so that's the first thing i'm going to do is select my first night folder and then i'm going to tell it where it says image and again we're doing luminance since his file names start with 2024 and the word LUM is with also within his file name. That's what I'm going to specify here. So my pattern matching looks like this 2024 asterisk LUM asterisk. And what that's saying is the file must start with 2024. And in between 2024 and LUM, that's what this asterisk means. It could be anything. So it'll get us through the rest of the date without needing to specify it. And then the asterisk afterwards says there could be additional characters after the word lum. Biases and darks we're not worried about because again, we already added those as masters. And then my flat frame, if we look at the file naming convention that he used, they all start with flat. We're gonna put our asterisk in there and I only want the flats for my luminance channel. So again, LUM is in the file name of his flats. So wild carding works the same way as it did that I showed you for the luminance files. It's going to look for any file that starts with the word flat. It doesn't care about anything after that as long as it finds LUM and then it doesn't care about anything after that. So now if I click OK, you can see it automatically added my five luminance images and then it also grabbed all the flat files that it found that were strictly for luminance. Quick and easy, right? So now it's just rinse and repeat. I would go to my second session, hit load with files. Now the only thing that I need to do is make sure that I change my root directory, right? Because we're in July 12th right now, which is my first night. So now I'm going to change it to July 13th. Select folder. I don't need to mess with this because I'm still working on luminance. Hit OK and boom, everything for that night's put into that session. Same thing with session three. Again, we're just going to move from July 13th down to our next night, which is the 17th. Select folder. We're going to leave our wildcard formulas in place, hit OK, and just keep on going all the way through for each night that you have luminance. Now, since we specified to create 10 session layers in the beginning of the project, I know that Doug did not shoot luminance um, even across 10 nights, so I'm not going to need all 10 of these. So as I go through this, as I get down to, I believe he, we'll all end up with just about eight. Just to clean things up, I'll highlight the sessions that I, I don't need and just come up to project and delete light. And it's, you can see it took away session nine for the luminance away from me. Same thing for 10, just highlight it, project, delete light, just to keep things cleaned up. No sense in having empty sessions when you're done with everything. Moving on to the other channels, it's the same thing. So if we come over into the red, I would go to load files with patterns and start the whole process over once I got through my luminance. So I would back up, come back up to the first night, which is July 12th, select that folder and everywhere that I see LUM, I'm going to type RED just for the image and just for the flats. And again, it's just because of the way, if you look over at the file list here, that Doug has his, his naming convention set up. Red in here for the red channel, 
green for the green, blue for the blue, and then again, all the flats start with the word flat. So this works in this case as well. So if I click OK, there's session one of my red. So there was three images that night, as well as the flats. And again, just rinse and repeat and keep on going until you have each night assigned to a session. And then anything that's left over that's empty, just select it come up to project and say delete light. So I'm going to pause the video and go through and knock the rest of these out and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I have all of my files loaded and all of my sessions for all four of my channels. And like I was mentioning before, I did not need all 10 sessions. I only ended up with six for luminance. So I deleted seven, eight, nine, and 10. Same thing with the red. I only needed seven. So I deleted the empty ones, so on and so forth with the green and the blue channels. So now I have all of my data loaded, separated into luminance, red, green, and blue. The only other thing I need to do now is to come over into properties and then flat and make sure I have biases subtract for the flat stack. You can see right here, identical parameters for all layers. So you don't need to do this for each session. That should be set up here under project and edit properties down here, identical parameters for all layers. If this is selected, then any change in these tabs that you make will be applied to all of your sessions. If it was unselected and I selected to subtract the biases here for my flat, I'd have to go through each and every one of these session layers and set that same setting. Now, all we need to do is come up underneath actions and, and click step one, build the directories, copy and link the images. So we'll click on that and let it do its thing. It's putting everything into your working directory. It's getting it all ready, pairing all of our data for writing the script and executing it and creating our final image for us. Once it says copy finished, we're ready to move to the second step. But before we do, I just want to show you what's going on behind the scenes. So if I come over and go into my working directory that I have set for Cyrillic, you can see I have a new folder named M16, which is our object name when we set up the project. Opening up that, you can see we have blue, green, luminance, and red, as well as a temp directory in a subfolder within each that relates to our session name. So again, we have six sessions for luminance. So as expected, we would see six folders as we have them configured. Inside each of them will be our flats, our images, and links back to our masters that we set. So just wanted to show you guys what it's doing behind the scenes. We'll leave that up on the screen and visit it later. Right now it is just copied files or it used links to the files that it needed. So with copy being finished, we're gonna come back up into actions and we're just gonna click on step two, build and run the serial script. And this will write a custom serial script and use serial's command line functionality to actually stack and pre-process these images. And I think this is where a lot of people get turned around sometimes. Serialic is not stacking, it's not registering. It's not doing anything besides providing you with a nice, easy interface to write a script that is to be ran with Cyril. So it's still Cyril doing all the work. It's just giving us a, a script to do what we needed to do without needing to know how to write scripts. So again, step two, you're going to click on that, let it do its thing. When it's done, we're not only going to have a stack for our luminance, red, green, and blue, but it's going to create a composite for us with the LRGMB as well as some other files that we can use depending on how you want to approach your processing. So again, I'm going to pause it and come right back when it's done. And once everything is complete, you'll see it'll open up your composited image for you in Cyril, which is what we have in the back here. If you look up top, this is final M16 LRGMB. So not only did it create the four stacks for us, it made the composite automatically as well. So if we come out of linear, and go into auto stretch there's our final m16 image ready for processing now the other thing that it does and if we jump back over into our working directory it creates a script directory and within the script if you're curious and you want to go through and look to see everything that it did this is the actual script that it wrote for us if we back up into the m16 again you'll see we have a bunch of other files here as well the ones you'll be interested in are the ones that start with final right so we have final m16 LRGB that was opened up automatically for us, but it also created just an RGB image for us. So I can open that up into Cyril and there is just our RGB image. And again, it created a final stack for RGB and luminance for us. That's these four right here. So if you didn't like the way it did the composite for you, then you have some additional options. So for example, and I'm not going to get into the processing part of this, but if I went up to image processing, RGB compositing, I can assign my red, green, and blue. And if we come down and unlink our auto stretch, then you can come in here and you can play with these colors, right? Because these, these colored blocks right here, you can change. So if I wanted to change, just as an example, the red to say magenta, I can click on this 
I can select the magenta and now everything that was red is not going to be magenta. So you can play around with the different colors that you want, as well as you can add your luminance too. The other way that you could do this is if you're familiar with pixel math, we can come in the image processing and pixel math. So, you know, we could, for example, load in our RGB final stacks and in the red, we can put the red and the green, we can put the green and then the blue and the blue, click apply. And it's effectively the same way that we just did it with the compositing tool, but Obviously within here, we can do something like an HOO. So instead of putting the green in the green channel, I can take this out and put blue in here, click apply. So there's more of an HOO look to the image. Obviously there's tons of different formulas you can do in here. You can blend two channels together to get different looks. That's not the intent for this video, but I just wanted to point it out for you guys. And the last thing that I wanted to go over, just like the process directory that's created whenever you use any of the serial built-in scripts, if we go back into our working directory, you could save off everything that is tagged as final, right? Those are your stacks that you're interested in. And then everything else you can delete. You save yourself some drive space. So I hope you guys found that useful. Before we go, I just want to say thanks to all my members here on YouTube and on buymeacoffee.com. I really appreciate everybody's support. Thanks for all of you that have made donations. Subscribe, liked, comment, share the videos. All that helps keep the channel around and, and continue to grow as it's been doing. It's very much appreciated. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Hit that bell notification so you never miss one of my videos until next time we'll see you on the next one in clear skies